27, 11 through 14. Now this is um, interesting because we made it up to Passion Week. During Passion Week, I won't finish it before Easter, but it's kind of cool that I've made it up to this, not even planned it out. It's just there. And God saw it that it'd be taught at this time, I guess. So we start in verse 11. But Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor questioned him. Now, this is, I believe, in all four Gospels. Little details in different ones. I haven't looked at them. But these accounts right here, from like his trial to the death to the resurrection, are all in four Gospels. There's very few things mentioned in all four Gospels. But all uh, maybe certain details are left out that, that is included in another. But the trial, the death, and resurrection are mentioned all in that. And I believe the other one's the feeding of 5,000. Um, and maybe one more. But that just shows the significance of that. That he was innocent, but he was still tried guilty. Cause, and he died for us and then would raise from the dead. And the fact that all four is men, mentioned in all four Gospels is because it's essential. In the whole New Testament, Paul talks about that. The rest of them talk about the death, death burial, and resurrection of Christ because it's what our faith is founded on. So he's questioning him, the governor. Are you, and in another... In, it doesn't say it in here, but I'm pretty sure in Luke it mentions that the governor's Pilate, um, Pontius Pilate. It's one of them details that Matthew doesn't include that is included elsewhere. Yep. Um, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, as you say. Now, um, Jesus often mentioned that his kingdom wasn't of this earth. Also, um, for him to be, which uh, I believe he says that to, he doesn't say that to Pilate, I believe he says that to someone else, which may not be recorded in Matthew, but he talks about how his kingdom's not of this world, and the guy pretty much thinks he's crazy, and then sends him back to Pilate or something, and then he's tried. But he's asking him if he's the king of the Jews, which the Messiah was ideally king of the Jews, but Jesus wasn't set up to be king yet. He was set up to die, to be the sacrificial lamb. He'll return as the king, conquering king, which is why he rode in on a donkey, but he comes back on a horse. A horse is a symbol of those who go into war rode on horses. So it's a symbol of him going into battle rather than him bringing peace. Um... So he's asking him this because if he was to say that he's trying to build a kingdom to overthrow Rome, then that would be the first strike that Rome would be like, okay, he's committing treason, let's put him away. So this was the obvious thing that Pilate was trying to get him to say. Verse 12, and to the accusations of the chief priests and elders against him, he made no reply. So he uh, replying to their accusations. That's because most of them are falsehoods. And also, it's to say that he's innocent, but if he was to stand up for himself, he wouldn't be able to stand up for us because he'd be found guiltless when we hold the guilt. So he took our guilt and remained silent. Um, well, they asked him because they had no uh, proof that he was. No, they had false witnesses yeah. and they had nothing there. Mm-hmm. The only thing they really kept claiming was he kept committing blasphemy. They had a problem with him healing on the Sabbath, which you look at Rome and Rome standards, Rome don't care about that. Yes, they want to keep peace with the Jews, but they don't care about that but if he was trying to overthrow Rome as rebels was they would but he had no intention and you see when his crowd got large he turned people away or moved elsewhere 
which shows that he wasn't trying to overthrow Rome, and Rome was probably noticing that his crowd dwindled down, and he wasn't sticking with the crowd. He wasn't trying to keep the crowd. He's helping people, but he wasn't trying to set himself up as a king to overthrow Rome. And I say Rome was smart enough to know this, and that wasn't the accusation the Jews were coming at Pilate with anyway, because they didn't want to admit that he was king. So the one thing that Rome could find guilty wasn't going to be the thing they were going to accuse him of. They kept accusing him of breaking the Sabbath. They kept accusing him of blasphemy. Yeah. They we find no in this yes. And he was faultless. Right. Verse 13. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how much... They testify against you. Of course Jesus is hearing this. He's asking him pretty much, why ain't you responding to their... And it's because if he were to stand up, that he wouldn't. we'd still die in our sins. He had to be found guilty and stand back so we could be saved. Verse 14, But the governor's great surprise, he answered him, Never a word. So at that point, and we see this part in Mark where he remains silent. I believe it's Mark because one of the Gospels says he remains silent, which is that part right there. And people, because there's all four accounts in the Gospel, and people look at them and say, well, this argues with this and this because they're all four different accounts. And no, it's just you got to see what it says and it backs each other up. So, he's surprised that he ain't trying to defend himself because he's realizing that Jesus and everyone around would know this was a death trial. It would be clear that it was a death trial and somebody not speaking up saying something in a trial that would lead to their death is just not done. Usually they plead something, you know. Jesus didn't do nothing because he knew and it was God's will that he'd die for us. 